Hi guys, and welcome back. Today, let's talk a bit about painting what we love. This is a topic that I think seems really clear cut on the surface. Like, of course you would be painting what you love, but I think that it can be really fraught with a lot of different emotions. And one of those things I think, at least for me, is that I oftentimes worry that if I paint the thing that I'm interested over and over again, that I will stagnate, I won't improve. And that's something that I desperately want. I want to get better at everything that I'm working on so that each time I do a painting, I feel that I'm taking myself farther so that I can do more with the next one. So, so we're gonna talk a bit about that. Some ways that you can paint the same thing that you love and not feel like you're just repeating the same issues and not improving. And it is one thing that I have noticed more and more with as I'm connected more with social media is that there's a certain amount of guilt too I think about painting what you love. I have gotten comments in the past and it sticks with you. I hate that I let it but comments about painting a certain type of subject matter again and again and again and the thing about being an artist is that we should be painting the things that make us feel excited to pick up the brush and we pretty much always know what that is, or hopefully we do. There's something that creates that spark in us to want to make artwork. So we should be really embracing that. And, and anyways, let's talk about it. Let's talk about ways to improve and to continue painting what you love, to not feel like you need to vary from that simply for the sake of infusing new different subject matter just so that you're improving, but not necessarily enjoying the process. So one of the first things that I have been doing recently, at least, is I've been trying to expand the list of things that I love to paint. So if that list is bigger, then I'll have more things to draw from, more subject matter to paint that I'll be interested in and keep things fresh and I can rotate things around and it just adds more fuel to the fire. One of the things that I like to do is I like to look at the things that I am interested in painting and then look for other subject matter that's similar. What are some offshoots that I could start focusing on? So I love painting characters and figures, uh, but I have been noticing that I have been really narrowed in on painting basically waist up characters. I really do enjoy painting the full figure and getting all of the details of the of the whole character. So that is something that I could expand on that I would still be very interested in, but it allows me to focus more on more challenges, more interesting compositions, more ways that I can adapt what I'm working on and have more interest to it. And this painting titled Blue Jay is available at my shop. She's available as a print or the original painting is up at my shop. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. I really, really love how this one turned out. I love the bird. It was just a joy to work on and it does feel like a painting that has all the things that I love to paint in it. So that was really exciting. But anyways, there's that link in the description. So for a very basic example, if you love painting scenery and you always paint forest scenes, maybe expanding into seascapes might be the way to go because then it might be pushing you into painting things that are different and difficult in a different way, but it still could be that you are painting the environment and the earth and many of those loves still connect. And to expand my list even more, I am trying to look at the things that I'm interested in in real life and thinking about what I like to paint those. So for me, I absolutely love animals, but in specific, I really, really love birds. So I want to paint more of them. I want those to be present in my pieces. And I've mentioned this before, I've talked about it, but I haven't really enacted it fully in a way that I, I don't like but that's one of those things that I know that I'm passionate about it. I absolutely love when I see a new bird species outside or when I see a crow that's on the giant tree that's across the street. So it's something that sparks interest and joy in my everyday life. So if I'm going to be painting something, I know that automatically I'm already gonna feel more attached to it if it has that element in it. And more personal examples, but I love 
when it's a rainy, cold, drizzly day and I love really dark, rich sunsets and nighttime. I love that kind of environmental feeling and I don't really do that a lot in my pieces. So I could really expand out how I am painting my characters, where they're existing, how they're interacting with their environments and the environments themselves that they're existing in. There's just so much more that I could be working on and challenging myself with. Those can be really complex environments, the way to portray that kind of feeling and emotion that comes with that. That can really add a lot of, a lot of challenges, which I love because with more challenges, that allows you to focus on new things that you can learn and develop and study and get better at. And I love that. The next thing is to start looking at references more aggressively. I, I could definitely use this advice and I have been really committing myself to that more is I tend to fall into the muscle memory habit where I've drawn an eye so many times now that I can draw an eye without looking at reference. But if I look at more reference, I can start focusing on different details that exist on different face types, on different ways that I could have the angles of the eyes, different eye makeup. There's just countless details that I don't know that aren't in my brain. And if I'm looking at the references more closely and I'm looking at new references, I'll get more and more of these little tiny details that I could add to my piece, new things that will make it fresh and exciting to work on. And it'll help develop my skills so that I'm studying things more and then turning that into my painting rather than just reiterating the same the same eye for example over and over again that is definitely definitely advice that i really do need to follow because i do tend to just want to crank out my pieces and get them done really quickly so i get into that certain habit and there is a certain thing to be said about finding the way that you like to draw things and having a certain style but there's just a lot of really fun options that can exist and looking at those and having those in your arsenal more will just make it more fun to be able to draw the things that you love. I think it's definitely helpful too, to look at your work and be really honest with yourself. Are there certain areas that you feel like you're being a little bit lazy on? You're cutting corners and you're not really looking at the reference because maybe it's too challenging to want to bite off how to actually draw it correctly. So you don't study it well and you just kind of muscle memory it or you make it kind of work. I definitely do that. I have that experience for sure. I've been noticing that more and more with the way that I draw and paint fabric. It, I don't know how it really ended up developing to the place that I'm at now, but I'm not really happy with it. It's not drawn in a way that that is specific to how fabric actually looks or different types of fabric. And that is a challenge that I'd love to to bite into. There's something really exciting about taking on something that is difficult and then watching it improve at it. So that's one very specific thing that I would really like to actually focus on so that I can bring that skill into my work. And it is still something that I, I love drawing. I love painting. I love drawing characters and fabric and the clothes that they're wearing. So to be able to do that more realistically and with more varieties, it's going to help me to really improve the composition. I can create shapes that make more sense in the real world and in my paintings. So, so that's just one example of things that I've been very lazy at cutting corners on. And it's, it's my subject matter. It's something that I love. So I should be putting my all into figuring out how to do that to the best of my ability. But hopefully the biggest takeaway is simply that art is self-expression. It should be something that you love. You should love creating it and love putting it out into the world. So it should be something that feels like it's taking a part of your soul and, and showing it to the world. <laughs> and I really want to feel that connection more. So I am really excited and ready to dive more fully into the things that I love in real life and I love painting and I want to find a way to just make that the best possible in my paintings. And there's a certain point where just the more that you love what you're painting, the more you want to paint and the more that you paint, the better you'll get. So naturally you're just going to build skills. But if you're more 
focused on what exactly you're studying and improving on, then you can improve faster. And that's what I'd like to do is just be more, more attentive to what I'm actually studying and painting so that instead of just reiterating the same thing, I can build and build and build. And don't forget this painting of Blue Jay is available as a print or the original painting at my shop. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. I loved working on this. I tried to specifically include something that I loved painting, the bird, the Blue Jay, but also some elements that I, I am so interested in. I love the spikes and the teeth and bones and I just, I really love this painting. I tried to infuse as many elements that I love into this piece. But that is about it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, thank you so much to my patrons. You guys are absolutely incredible. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.